Okay, so Caribou in Alaska is back in the news. If you've been following the saga, it's been going on since April of 2021. So we're in the third year of what's happening from a caribou perspective in Alaska. And it's important to look at because there's things happening with caribou that really fall firmly in the place in which hunters have to make hard decisions. So what are you going on about, Robbie? Between April 2021 and April 2022, if you're paying attention, Tyler Friel put out a bunch of articles, we put out a bunch of podcasts about the potential of closure of federal grounds for non-resident hunters. This was being pushed by the Federal Subsistence Board and the Northwest Arctic Regional Advisory Council. That decision happened and more than 60 million acres of land was closed to non-local, non-resident hunting because the whole reason for the closure is because caribou herds are just not doing very well in Alaska right now. The first thing I will say that I'm not going to spend a lot of time on is that caribou populations, their population dynamics fluctuate very substantially over time. So you can get a massive drop in populations, you can get massive increases, they can shift migration routes. There's very little science to say why that happens. And so because of that, I'm just not going to focus on it and we're going to move to the next point. So when they close the federal grounds from a non-hunting perspective, we have to sort of scratch our heads to say, well, is this something that is really driving mortality in the caribou herd? Is the non-resident mortality take driving caribou declines? Because it sounds like the non-residents are absolutely decimating, hammering caribou herds. So what do caribou populations look like? The Alaska Department of Fish and Game monitors caribou across the entire state of Alaska. And caribou populations are declining. In 2019, the population was about 244,000. In 2021, that population number was now 188,000, which prompted this federal subsistence board to start talking about it because it dropped under the 200,000 caribou threshold. And that threshold then triggers this idea of intensified management of the caribou herd, okay? Very, very important point. The latest photo census done in July of 2022 showed another 12% drop to 164,000 caribou. Okay, so we absolutely know for a matter of fact we have a declining caribou herd. So what can be done? Let's just talk about it from a biological perspective. Let's play ball, just let's you decide, like what can you do? There's only a couple of things that you can do from a management perspective, and here they are. The first thing you can do, number one, is reduce harvest. That makes complete sense, right? The population's declining. We want more animals on the landscape in the future, so you would reduce take. Absolutely, every single hunter should be on the same page when it comes to that. Regardless of species, anywhere in the world. Population's not doing good. Remove, reduce take, and let the population rebound. Number two, reduce female harvest. If you are taking females out of a population, that's where you should focus your efforts first because that's the reproductive engine of any population. If you want populations to grow, don't take the females. Case in point, literally every single wildlife species in the 1910s, 1920s, and the shift to a male-valued trophy structure that then gave grace to calves and cows. Number three is probably predator control. Predators, I don't know in this scenario if the science has been done to estimate the amount of mortality in the herd as a result of predators, but some sort of predator suppression would result in a greater chance of calf survival, which means population growth. And then lastly, when you're dealing with reducing harvest, it, it's split, right? Reducing opportunities for local resident hunters and reducing opportunities for non-resident hunters, all framed up in this idea of what is going to do the thing that is best to grow the population in the future. Of the things that I've listed, a lot of them are logistically challenging or could come with severe scrutiny, i.e. like predator control. So typically the most parsimonious option is taken. The most parsimonious option is typically the simplest and the most effective to implement, i.e. in this case, the idea, just like the feds did, 
is get rid of non-resident hunting. So now let's go back to the impact. Do non-resident hunting really have an impact that deserves the removal of non-resident quota on the caribou population? Well, if you know anything about the data, the data shows that typically non-resident hunters are taking between 250 and 300 caribou bulls every year. If the latest photo survey is about 160,000, 250 to 300 is 0.1% of the population. 0.1% of the population. And they're only taking bulls. They're not taking anything associated with the reproductive engine of that population. So it makes you scratch your head a little bit. What's really going on here? So why are we talking about this? Well, there's two proposals that are coming in a slate of about 45 proposals to the Alaska State Game Board that has a potential to reduce hunter opportunity. There's also a number of proposals in there that are reducing hunter harvest. There are five proposals in the slate of 45 that are actually saying, hey, look, five caribou is too much. Let's go to four. And then one of the four only be a cow for resident hunters. We should all say yes to that because we know limiting harvest, specifically of the reproductive engine, is good for population health in the future. In contrast, Proposal 3 and Proposal 38 suggest that non-hunting opportunities for one bull caribou should be removed. Now remember, non-hunter impact on the caribou herd of between 250 and 300 bulls a year not a single cow is taken, i.e. not affecting the reproductive engine, is 0.1% of the population off the current caribou photo count in 2022. So it makes you scratch your head a little bit to say, well, why are you going after the non-resident hunting opportunity? Now, if you've been listening, you're probably screaming down the video at me saying, Robbie, you are the kettle calling the pot black. You are advocating for reducing harvest for residents but you are advocating for non-reduction in harvest for non-resident. You're a non-resident yourself. Aren't you biasing the non-residents and hurting the resident hunters? My answer is no, and here's why. The resident reductions are still maintaining opportunity, still maintaining a very healthy quota for take, but also targeting specifically the reproductive engine of the population that we want to grow in the future. On the non-resident side, it's eliminating opportunity. On the resident side, there's a cow component. On the non-resident side, there's not a cow component. It's only bulls. And then additionally, there's an economic impact tied to non-resident hunters coming into the country, flights, accommodations, food, buying uh, flights into the interior. There's a little impact component here that I think needs to be considered when opportunity is taken away. So what can you do? The public comment period is currently open for all 45 proposals. You can put your public comment in. You can have your say from a both resident and non-resident perspective. From my perspective, my public comment will be supporting the resident quota reductions and not in support of Proposal 3 and Proposal 38. And again, the reason it's different is that you're looking at 0.1% of impact as well as the elimination of opportunity. If you want to understand more about this, look up Tyler Friel's writing in Outdoor Life. He is the spear tip, he is the man on the ground that understands this issue better than anyone. So I'd recommend look him up, look up his writings, digest it, and then use that information to provide public comment to the Alaska State Game Board, which I think ends by the towards the end of January. At the end of the day, as hunters, we want opportunity, but we also recognize that we want sustainable wildlife in the future. And because of that, quotas have to be reduced. Quotas have to be reduced, not opportunity has to be reduced, specifically when it comes to an opportunity that has almost negligible impacts on the population that you're trying to conserve. Thank <laughs> you.